What is your opinion on ghosts? As uh, as as a metaphysical phenomena? As if they're real or not. I'm afraid I don't think they're real. I do think, mm -hmm. um, I think, so I'm a metaphysical anti-realist in the sense that I don't think it's possible for us to make comments on non-empirical things because all of the means by which we would analyze those things have to be empirical, you know? Like, I don't think you can disprove the existence of ghosts, for example. Same with God or a bunch of other stuff. Um, I, I, it's pretty fun to imagine. Um, in terms of, like, ghosts as, like, a, a, a component of media, I think that they're done so boring and they could be so much more interesting. Like, all ghosts in media, like horror movies or whatever, are the same bullshit over and over and over again. It's like, okay, so, like, a ghost is t mad here because, like, five centuries ago someone did some... The bad thing happened. It's like, holy shit, fucking Snoozeville, you know? Mm. Ghosts never have a personality mm. either. They're always just stupid and vengeful. What, oh, where are God. the horror movies where ghosts have a personality beyond just being, like, angry and easily lured by, like, ghost hunting traps, you know? Like, what? why isn't there, like, a ghost horror movie of, like, some kind of sadistic, like, Satan wheeling and dealing ghost where they'll try to, like, trick you out of things? Like, really, though? Like, imagine mm. a haunting movie where, like, you you know you know like the the stereotypical beginning where they move into a house and like the kid the kid discovers the ghost first you know like the the mom will come upstairs and she'll be like uh who are you talking to Timmy and Timmy will be like I'm talking to my new friend and then you know she'll be like and the mom will roll her eyes be like oh yeah who and then Timmy is like oh Mr Jameson who died here in 1927 and she'll like frantically look through the newspaper and there was someone who died there in 19 blah 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 right but like. Imagine if instead of that bullshit, and then uh, you know you know how it plays out after that, right? Imagine if the ghost talked to the to the the parents as well, you know, like, hey, your house a little run down, I can fix it up for you. Hey, you're having problems with your marriage, I can fix it up for you. You know, it'll cost a bit, just a little, and bit by bit, like you sell little bits of yourself to them until eventually, when you're in too deep, you realize the problem and you try to break the deal, you know. And at that point, then you have then you have a goddamn thriller because that ghost owns your ass. I think it's either a thriller or an Adam Sandler movie. Well, keep him out of it. I, <laughs> listen, I'm just saying, I think that you could, the, there's just so, it's, I'm just saying like, you know, the vast majority of horror movies that involve ghosts are like the same shit. There are people in my chat who are idiots and honestly, frankly, don't even deserve to be in my community who are pointing out that if you can believe it, the thing that I'm describing has been done before. Incredibly, they don't seem to understand that, yes, everything has been done before. I'm only pointing out that it's an underrepresented trope that I'd like to see done more. Uh, you know, I, I, I just there's so much interesting stuff that you can do, but it's always the same. It's always, you know, when the when they do possessions, they'll like stand at the end of a hallway going like, hey. <laughs> you know, and they'll turn around, they'll be spooky. It's just, it's the same. It's Snoozeville. I hate horror films. They're so boring. They're so predictable. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan either. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, um, I could ramble on that for no. For, for ghosts, really though, what about time. what about Sixth Sense? What did you think of that? I, mean, I thought that was a neat take on it. Yeah, I like. I no, mean, I like Sixth Sense a lot. Right. I mean, it wasn't really a horror film. It was. It was. You know, more no. of a. How, how would you even describe like just a, a, a drama suspense drama Sus horror. yeah suspense drama yeah i mean obviously it was a really really good um you know movie i i just think that as a narrative device they're underutilized because you can do anything with ghosts anything at all hmm. um I, i've just i guess i've noticed this broader pattern where it seems like people like to get a lot of nostalgia kicks out of um bringing back horror tropes so you know, we, we have vampires, you know, we had like Amy Rice and Twilight and all that crap, you know, um, and, and, and werewolves kind of parallel to that, you know, and maybe we'll get mummies sometime or another, who knows. But it feels like so rarely are, are, are people willing to experiment. Did I say Anne Rice? Amy? Is it Amy Rice? Amy Rice, yeah. Um, with with uh, the, you know, the vampire diaries and crap, I whatever. I thought it was Anne Rice, too. Yeah, um, I think I'm, I'm mixing up a few people. And... Um, they uh uh fuck what was i saying oh they need to experiment more you know the the best piece of vampire media that came out in the past like two decades in my opinion was vampire the masquerade bloodlines which was a video game adaptation of a tabletop game and a broader universe that the tabletop game is set in and um it was pretty subversive i think of a lot of vampire tropes so yeah, i think they just need to experiment more in my opinion ufos and aliens um opinion? I don't think we've ever been visited by aliens. 
So I, I yeah, I don't I don't believe that. Um Oh jeez. I don't believe that. I, I mean I I do think there are aliens out there, I guess. It seems pretty statistically likely that there would be. I don't know if we'll ever meet them, though. Um, it seems like there are a lot of um, physical barriers to in, in the great scope of the universe, you know, to, to finding other intelligent life. My, my hope with, like, aliens or intelligent life is that it's us, eventually, you know? Like, give it 10,000 years, right? You know, maybe uh, maybe humans colonize the stars a little bit. Solar system first, and then maybe a little farther out. Maybe, maybe not. You know, it's nice to imagine. Um, and if we're able to get that far, you know, we can reflect on that. And, well, think about how many differences there are between, like, English and French people. Like, they're right next to each other. Think of how many differences there are between Indians and Pakistani people. They're right next to each other. Now imagine, like, parallel human development over centuries on Mars and Earth. As far as I'm concerned, they would be aliens to us. Um, and, and I think that could be nice to look forward to, because that would lead to a level of cultural diversity that is just unparalleled on Earth. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, the, what do you think the barriers are? Like, do you have a reason why you think aliens would never visit? Um, I think they would if they could. I don't know about their intentions, but you know, I think they would. I think they would if they were able to. Um, it to me, it's just it's more like um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a scientist. I don't want to speak out of my field or whatever. It seems like uh, strong arguments have been made that because hmm. because there's there's a temporal problem as well, right? With regards mm -hmm. to this, like you know, life bloomed on our planet so and so long ago, but humans could have arisen 10,000 years in the past, 10,000 years in the future. We were here 10,000 years ago. I just mean like in terms of uh, modern human civilization. We're right. growing so quickly now. Who knows chronologically if we're in line with other civilizations? Maybe there are others in our relative like galactic area, except they rose and fell a million years ago or will in a million years. And maybe we'll be gone by the time they rise. It's just really hard to say. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's no, a good that, thing. To that's what for. I think too. Uh, the the universe is so, has been here for so long, and we've only been able to uh, you know been where we are now in such a small amount of time. What's the odds that there's anything out there that's lined up with us? So somebody could have been able to visit us a couple million years ago or a billion years ago. Could be um, wrong, of course. It's these are all predictions, be. right? They're not even models. Uh, really, because a model needs pre-existing data to form a pattern. Um, right. We basically just have like theories that we're plugging in to see like which makes the most sense, which describes what we've already seen. It could be that one day we get visited by like a full-on galactic federation type deal, and we're like, oh, okay, I guess we were totally fucking wrong. New model, you know? Like, it, it could happen. That's happened to humans before, so um, not that exact thing, but that right. general thing. Are we in a simulation? Um... Metaphysical anti-realism. I don't think there's any point in talking about it. I think we should live as though we're not. I will say, however, that I find the arguments that we are to be incredibly unconvincing. Hmm. Um, because they the arguments that we it is more likely we are in a simulation than not presuppose the idea that it's possible for a computer to simulate everything. And it presupposes the idea that a computer, which up to this point, we only know of computers that can process empirical things, could process a metaphysical thing um, like our consciousness. Um, I feel like some people have a very, very, very high opinion of what computers are capable of doing when at the moment we know that they can't even do a fraction of what we're capable of with our meaty flesh brains. Um, and even we can't like create consciousnesses in our imagination, right? Like when we think of a person and imagine them, it's not like that person exists just in a limited capacity. They only exist in our thoughts. Um, you can get philosophical about it, but no, I, I don't really think so. I think I think a lot of people, hmm, I think to a lot of people, and this may come off as like really cynical, but I think to a lot of people, the pontification here, you know, like, are we in a simulation? Are we not? Serves a similar social function that religion used to um, and kind of still does, you know. Uh, it, historically, religion has often been used of a way of delaying one's rewards for good be uh, behavior in life where, you know, you work your entire life for your lord, and it's like, okay, well, don't have a revolution or whatever, because if you die, and you were good and pious in life, then you'll get your eternal reward in heaven, which is worth way more than decent pay in, like, the mortal life. 
And with the simulation stuff, I feel like we're training people for a kind of Rick and Morty tier political apathy where there are people out there who get disconnected from real world politics and social engagement because they're just so obsessed with the idea that there's some scientific truth that invalidates all of this political or social work. I've talked to people like that before. It always really frustrated me. That's not the case for everyone. It's just something I've noticed. Okay. Um, it's funny when you said that because I, uh, up until the point where you said that it's, you know, predisposed about, um, being in a simulation is that you uh, have to believe that a computer will eventually be able to make Sims 100 million and that will be the perfect society so that everybody in the Sims, all the characters in the Sims now are in a simulation, but they're all sentient. And I thought to myself, yeah, computers will eventually do that. But that also may, it also uh, assumes that we would exist long enough for computers to be able to be built that well. And it's too much assuming. And I guess... We don't even know what a consciousness is yet. Like we don't yeah. even we, we we have no idea what what it actually is. There's no answer to that. No matter how many times people have tried, we don't have any explanation for what consciousnesses are. So to that end, I mean, if we can't answer that, I don't know how we could even begin to answer other questions. Mm. Um, well, you kind of touched on it a little. What about um, what are your feelings on religion and specifically good or bad for society? nowadays um, i'm not a big fan i'm a fan of religion in the durkheimian sense where you have social rituals that reinforce the distinction between the sacred and the profane the I idea a word for my, my list now what do do what do durkheim he, uh, emil durkheim he was a sociologist in the 19th century who wrote on okay. amid other things uh religion okay sorry oh no not at all um, I, I'm very fond of his definition of religion because it doesn't involve anything supernatural it's just um rituals that people engage in to distinguish between the sacred and the profane to that effect a uh, football game is a kind of religion or, or football broadly because you know people engage in ritualistic behavior with it and they certainly distinguish between the sacred and the profane you would call it i suppose acceptable or unacceptable sportsmanship following the rules of the game you know um it, it, we do this for lots of stuff i think those things are great i think people need that rallying cry i think people need that um that, that symbol to, to, to work around. What I don't like is superstition, um, which unfortunately is just an inseparable part of most religion. I'm very much not a fan of that. I think it disrupts people's ability to think critically. Yeah, yeah I, I would agree with that point. The, uh, yeah, there is something even to like when people are praying, like that act of chanting together, you know, and so some of those acts, there's a lot to that that can be good, but I agree with the superstition yeah because going to a political protest is a ritual that you use to reinforce the distinctions between the sacred and the profane you know and i've done that um that's fine going to a, a, a concert a festival like these things could be fun um and i think they elicit sometimes really positive emotions in people it seems to be something we need or at least something we want a lot because we keep building these structures over and over between civilizations and time periods. We keep doing this over and over. We find excuses to get people together into stadiums and to collectively engage in behavior to distinguish between things we do and don't like. Obviously, we like doing this, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, superstition. Eh, yeah, yeah.